This Week at NASA. Five, all three engines up and burning. Two, one, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Space Shuttle Atlantis lifted off from Launch Pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center on July 8th to begin STS-135, the final mission of NASA's Space Shuttle program. We got to witness something really, really special and something really amazing. The shuttle program has been truly phenomenal, and I take great pride in this team and, and thank them for all they've done. Uh, we still got a, a lot to do before it's over, and uh, they're going to be doing some, a lot of work on orbit, and then we're going we're gonna to bring them home safe, and I'm looking forward to that landing back here at the Cape. The Atlantis crew of Commander Chris Ferguson, Pilot Doug Hurley, and Mission Specialists Sandy Magnus and Rex Walheim is delivering cargo and supplies to the International Space Station that are crucial for its post-shuttle operation. The MPLM will have about 15,000 pounds of cargo inside it, and we have the mid-deck, and the mid-deck will hold about another 8,000 pounds. Uh, of cargo. We have uh, a lot of clothing, a lot of food uh, to the tune of about uh, 4,000 pounds and of course we want to put the, the space station in a good position to, uh, uh, to be self-sustaining for up to a year. Officially designated OV or Orbital Vehicle 104, Atlantis began its maiden voyage on October 3, 1985. STS-51J was a four-day mission that took into space a classified Department of Defense payload. When this flight is in the history books, Atlantis will have flown 33 of the Space Shuttle Program's 135 missions. Scientists analyzing data from NASA's Cassini spacecraft now have the first ever up-close details of a Saturn storm that's eight times the surface area of Earth. The storm that's been raging since Cassini's first detected it on December 5, 2010, wraps around the entire planet, covering approximately 1.5 billion square miles. The storm is about 500 times larger than the biggest storm previously seen by Cassini, and its rate of lightning flashes is 10 times more frequent than any other storm monitored since Cassini's arrival at Saturn in 2004. NASA's largest supercomputer, Pleiades, has been ranked seventh fastest in the world. Named for the prominent Pleiades star cluster in the night sky, the supercomputer can theoretically perform approximately 1.32 quadrillion calculations per second, yet has a simple interface compatible with standard desktop engineering workstations and NASA desktop computers. Located at the Ames Research Center, more than a thousand active users around the country rely on Pleiades to help advance our knowledge of the Earth, solar system, and the universe. The ranking was announced at the 26th International Supercomputing Conference in Hamburg, Germany. And now, centerpieces. Three, two, one, one. ignition. We have liftoff of the NASA launched a U.S. Air Force Minotaur-1 rocket carrying the Department of Defense's Operationally Responsive Space Office's ORS-1 satellite June 29th from the range at Wallops Flight Facility in the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport in Virginia. The ORS-1 satellite is significant because it's the first uh, completely DOD, Department of Defense, owned and operated satellite. Rapidly developing and fielding ORS-1 is an important step to demonstrate the capability to meet emerging and persistent warfighter needs on operationally relevant timelines. You can imagine that if you were deployed out in some very remote part of the world, uh, not knowing what was over the next ridge line would be a big concern. A satellite like ORS-1 will actually allow them to understand what is over that ridge line and uh, both good and bad. The Minotaur-1 rocket is a four-stage vehicle that stands about 70 feet tall and five feet wide. The launch vehicle tonight is uh, provided by Orbital Sciences Corporation. This is a Minotaur-1 launch vehicle. The first and second stages are leftover and retrofitted ICBM motors. The upper two stages are commercial motors. The Operationally Responsive Space Office and Department of Defense dedicated this launch to the Medal of Honor winners from the U.S. Central Command Area of Operation. Yeah. Nearly 90 students from minority-serving institutions and community colleges around the country visited Johnson Space Center to participate in the Reduced Gravity Education Flight Program. 
Participants were selected to design, build, and fly experiments on board an aircraft that flies parabolic arcs to simulate microgravity. This program ties right into NASA's goal of preparing students for jobs and STEM careers by allowing them to take their own research all the way from the proposal, design, construction, and testing phase of parabolic flight. We treat them just like NASA researchers. The Flight Week for Minority and Community College students was designed to inspire students from underrepresented and underserved populations to pursue careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. The flight really provides them an opportunity to realize that, yeah, I can do this. Uh, I see other people who look like me, talk like me, are doing this. It's exhausting, but it's also extraordinarily intellectually stimulating. I think when you can feel, see, and touch something, it makes it that much more real, rather than just reading about it in a book. In addition to science, engineering, and research skills, the students also honed other abilities. The most important thing I've learned from this experience is about teamwork and leadership skills. JSC's education office will host student and teacher groups during several other reduced gravity flight weeks this summer. It was awesome. It was the word of the day. It was the best experience of my life, and I don't think anything could ever top what I was able to experience. The astronomical science and education programs of the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, or SOFIA, were the focus of a media day at the Dryden Aircraft Operations Facility in Palmdale, California. Numerous speakers detail the SOFIA program, its science missions and educational outreach activities to members of both the professional news media and followers of the Twitter social media website. In addition, two of the first six teachers who flew aboard the SOFIA as part of the Airborne Astronomy Ambassadors Program during a recent mission share their experiences with reporters and other attendees. This has been a, a huge privilege. It's been a huge gift. It's been way up there with one of the most important events of my life. The shuttle was United States Navy Captain and NASA astronaut Barry Butch Wilmore. Astronaut Butch Wilmore appeared at NASA night at the Gladiators, Cleveland's Arena Football League team. Wilmore participated in on-field activities at Quicken Loans Arena that included the game's official coin toss, a halftime demonstration by the Great Lakes Science Center, and a post-game autograph session. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.